And then number six is a couple of additives I really want you to pay attention to. These are the most common additives you'll find in food. And this is where you're gonna probably wanna take some notes because you're not gonna wanna have to try to remember all these from memory, okay? So look for additives, all right? When you're looking at your ingredient list, look for these specific additives. And the first one is MSG, okay? MSG stands for monosodium glutamate, all right? It basically tells your brain it puts it on hyperdrive and says, eat more of this, eat more of this, eat more of this, all right? So it's kind of the same way that sugar works. If you ever get a food with MSG and sugar in it, it's basically like ecstasy for your brain, all right? <clears throat> now, food companies put MSG in food for obvious reasons. They want you to eat more, all right? The more you eat, the more pleasure you get out of the food, the more likely you are to eat it again, buy it again, come back to the restaurant again, whatever it might be. So sometimes they're gonna put MSG, these food companies have gotten smarter. They'll now start to put monosodium glutamate, the entire word, so you actually have to read it out loud and make sure it's the right one. Um, modified cornstarch is another form of that. Like you can look at that. Modified cornstarch will be another type of form of MSG, so be mindful of that. Um, the next one is food colorings, okay? So the food colors you wanna watch out for um, are the blues, the yellows, and the reds, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so when you're looking for food coloring, just be mindful, all right? If it's not a natural food coloring from like, you know, a vegetable or a fruit, it's probably, you know, red, you know, one or five or whatever it might be, blue six, you know, yellow two, whatever it might say. Just be mindful of looking for those types of dyes, okay? Nitrates, which you're gonna typically find in processed meat, so deli meats, bacon, sausages, uh, breakfast meats, things like that, you're gonna find nitrates. Now, I've heard mixed reviews on, I've seen research that say nitrates really aren't that bad. I've seen you know, other studies that say nitrates can be harmful long term. Uh, the main point to realize with all of these additives is, is it's going to be a long term effect on you, okay? It's gonna happen 10, 20, 30 years down the road, um, which is hard to determine whether or not these additives played a huge role in you know, deteriorating health. But my advice is just try to reduce how often you consume these, all right? Um, they make plenty of nitrate-free deli meats and processed meats and, and bacons and sausages and things like that. So, you know, every now and then try to reduce the amount of nitrates and additives that you can consume. Guar gum, which you can find in anything from actual chewing gum to um, anything where two substances need to be bound together, typically oil and water, all right? Because um, like in, in things like milk that hasn't been touched by human uh, hands, uh, oil and water or the, the fat and the water in the milk is already uh, kind of bound together. Guar gums and even um, uh, carrageenan, which is another form of this, uh, will we'll bind things together. And that can cause a lot of, over time, that can cause a lot of digestional uh, discomfort. You can end up with things like IBS, or which is irritable bowel syndrome. You can end up with um, just immunity issues, all right? So we wanna try to reduce these additives as much as we possibly can. High fructose corn syrup, this is one you've probably heard of before. Um, there's not a huge difference between high fructose corn syrup and regular corn syrup or regular sugar, but, and, and, and to be completely honest, most food companies are actually taking high fructose corn syrup out of their food because they realize that the public understands that that's something to avoid, and so people are not buying products with high fructose corn syrup. Um, they're buying food products that don't have that, but you gotta remember that food companies aren't going to change the amount of sugar in a food unless we all like get up in arms about it. They're typically going to change the name of it. So it's still gonna be syrup, it's still gonna be sugar, it's gonna be something like sucro sucralose or um, sucrose or anything that ends in os pretty much is a sugar, all right? So just remember that companies aren't taking high fructose corn syrup out, they're just replacing it and still giving you the same amount of sugar, they're just changing the name, all right? Aspartame is another type of sugar. This is an artificial sweetener. You'll find it in gums, you'll find it in diet drinks like Coke and Pepsi and things like that. Um, aspartame, the way I learned about aspartame is it was actually a chemical that was used in biological warfare during the Iraq war. They had a bunch of it, they didn't know what to do with it, they modified it a little bit and they started putting it in drinks, okay? So the effect that it has on your brain um, is really no different than actual sugar and it could even be metabolically more unhealthy and for your gut health it could be even more unhealthy. So if you're starting to notice that you get bloated or you get stomach aches after you drink a Coke or maybe you've been drinking Cokes for a while and you just start to notice that your stomach really isn't feeling that great, 
part of it could be things like aspartame. All right, so just be mindful of that. A good alternative would be something like stevia. Okay, stevia is a more natural extract uh, from a plant, so the chemicals are going to be much more recognizable by the body, and so it's not gonna have the same kind of effect.